Okay, the first step in installing your inner rotor kit is to lay the bike on its side. The reason is that when you pull off the stator plate, um, the stator plate comes down to about here, and then the oil level in the engine, if it's proper, is up to about there, and it'll leak out all over the place. So you got to lean it over to the right or lay it on the right far enough so that the oil will not be, obviously, high up enough to leak out the stator plate when you take it off. When you do this, make sure your gas tank is empty, or at least below half, so that it won't come out the, uh, the vent in your carb, and also, or the vent in your, in your cap, and make sure that the carb is, um, is empty. So drain the float bowl so that it doesn't leak all over your garage floor. Next step, uh, remove the uh, ignition cover. Sometimes you have to remove the shifter depending upon what shifter you have and what position you put it in. Alright, and then uh, remove whatever bolt is here. Obviously, this is not the real flywheel for this motor. Um, and then remove the flywheel. And then you'll have to remove two Phillips screws from here and here to hold the stator plate on. And uh, those are going to be a pain in the butt. And after you get those out, um, pop off your stator plate. Which probably won't be that easy either. Alright, at this time it's probably best to check your timing chain. Just make sure that it's, you know, not slack, doesn't have a bunch of slack. And uh, check the teeth on your oil pump. For some reason they seem to wear sometimes. So, um, at least in my, my experience. So just make sure that that's all, all good in there. Um, and then you're ready to install your new inner rotor kit. Alright, so I got my new Kitako inner rotor kit. Very nice. This is um, much better than those ones you can get on eBay. Those ones that are on eBay are copied from this, but they suck. The, uh, the CDI boxes on the eBay ones, they can't actually be mounted hard to the frame. Um, the vibrations will make them cut out at high RPMs. So I got this genuine one from Kotako. It's actually Japanese, not a Chinese copy. So here it is. Um, make sure that you install that O-ring on there. And also the oil seal for the crankshaft. I like to dab a little bit of oil or something, so I'll just grab some oil off of here on the inside of the seal so that it goes over the crankshaft nice and easy without any problems. Alright, when you put this on, make sure that the, uh, the coil is towards the front of the bike. And just slide it right on. Don't forget those two oil seals that go behind the plate. I just left mine on there before. Kotaku gives you new ones. If yours are flattened out at all, then uh, use the ones that Kotaku gives you. If yours are fine, just leave them and save the new ones for when you need them. Uh, I replaced my um, my Phillips screws with Allen's so that it's easier to take out because I think that we all know from trying to remove them how much of a pain in the butt they are. Screw down the stator, your new stator plate. There we go. Washer. And my flywheel nut. Alright, so now that we got the bolt bolted down, um, you need to set the distance here. Um, I like to just do it the thickness of a business card. The actual measurement is irrelevant because you can just use a business card. So, business card in there, and you just loosen these up, and the magnet will pull it right up to the perfect level. There we go. Snap them into position, and you just tighten them down. Pull your card out of there. Alright, and then it's just a matter of wiring up the rest of the stuff to your uh, to the new CDI box that the, C the inner rotor kit comes with. Right here. And um, then we're ready to start it up. Time to test her out. I'm in the pocket mat right now, so I'll hide it. Add to that, it's 
There's a thunderstorm going on outside, so. 